Okay, in this video we're going to discuss two terms that are commonly used in statistics. The first term is population, the other term we'll discuss is sample. Alright, so you've probably heard people talk about a population of interest or a population for their study, and you might hear them say something like, our population is the set of all college students living in the United States today. The problem with that statement of the population is, is that it doesn't explain what about those students you're interested in. So let's look at the actual definition of a population instead. A population is the set of all measurements of interest to the investigator. All measurements of interest is the key phrase here. When you think of population, try to think of a set of measurements, right? So for example, instead of saying I'm interested in college students living in the United States today, I could say I'm interested in the heights or ages of all college students living in the United States today. Maybe I want to know what the average age of college students in the nation is. So in that case, I'm interested in the ages of each individual college student. And I could maybe list that in an Excel spreadsheet, and then I can work with that data there. But the entire set, the full set of measurements that I'm interested in contains, say, in an Excel spreadsheet would be my population in that case. So it's not the individual college student that's a part of my population, but rather a measurement that I've taken off of that college student, in this case, the college student's age. All right, there's a little sentence underneath this definition that says, typically there are too many experimental units or subjects in a population to consider every one. However, if we can examine every single one, we conduct what is called a census, right? So if you actually went out and asked every single college student what their age was, you'd be conducting a census of college students living in the United States. That's why we call try, the attempt to try to count every member of the U.S. population or every person living in the U.S. as a census, right? So that thing we do every 10 years that we call a census, it's called a census because it's our attempt to count everyone or to take a measurement from the entire set of subjects living in the United States. Okay, so think of the Excel spreadsheet idea when you think of population. In other words, a list of measurements. In this case, it would be a two-dimensional list, right? It looks like famous people, and you have their height and weight, right? So it's a two-dimensional set here. In other words, you have two measurements taken off of each subject. But either way, the general idea is that that's what you want to think of when you think of population, a giant file from Excel that has a bunch of measurements in it. By the way, I'm saying giant file. It could also be a very small file, right? I could be interested in only the male students who are currently in my courses this semester. That could be a very small group, right? You don't want to think of this vaguely as your population, like male students generically. You'd want to say something like, the ages of male students, right? So again, you'll occasionally hear your professor say something like, so our population is the set of women at FIU. Well, that's okay as long as the context is clear that you're talking about the heights, let's say, of women at FIU, right? So if it's already been discussed that you're talking about their heights that you're interested in, then if you say something like, my population is a set of women attending FIU, then it's okay because the context is clear. Well, we were talking about heights, so what he's really interested in is that measurement taken from each woman, their height individually is going to be recorded in an Excel spreadsheet, and you'll have a huge list of heights, and that's your population, right? So in context, I guess it's okay to use that kind of loose language, but technically your population is a set of measurements, and it is not, say, the experimental units or subjects that you're taking those measurements from. All right, so maybe not the most important distinction, but occasionally it will help you to think about what's really of interest to the investigator, right? By thinking about it in terms of measurements, it'll help make other things clear down the road. Okay, let's look at another term then. The last term I want to discuss is the term sample. So a sample is a subset of measurements selected from the population of interest. All this means is that instead of looking at the entire set of measurements, you're going to look at a small, smaller group or a small subset. So the subset could be large or small, but of course, typically it's not nearly the size of the population. So the general idea is that a sample is just a subset of measurements taken from the population of interest. So it's not the entire group of measurements, it's just some smaller amount of them, so some subset from that population.